All right, the wide receivers are up next on my tour through the positions for 2022 fantasy football in terms of the receivers that I suggest you do not draft, uh, fade, avoid, whatever term you want to use uh, for the upcoming season. Now, leading the list is Debo Samuel of the San Francisco 49ers. I'm not going to reiterate everything. I posted a separate video on this. Uh, it's quite extensive. Number of reasons why I don't like Samuel. The injury factor, he's uh, had a history of getting hurt. Trey Lance being under center favors a downfield game, which goes against what Samuel does best uh, in the intermediate range. The development of Brandon Ayuk stealing looks and the run-heavy aspect of the offense as a whole uh, will not leave a lot of targets up for grabs between Samuel Ayuk and George Kittle. So Samuel is the one who leads all the uh, receivers for me in terms of fades. The second one on the list is Tyreek Hill. I like Jalen Waddle better, for, better just simply because of his ADP. Um, it's the obvious call uh, talking about Hill facing a vast, vast, vast downgrade in quarterback quality from Patrick Mahomes to Tua Tagovailoa. Um, Tagovailoa has to prove that he can throw the football down the field, which he has not done at this point. He has a solid relationship chemistry with Waddle already. They did some really good things a year ago. Um, and I think Hill is still going way too high in drafts relative to Waddle, who actually could outproduce him post more receptions, uh, maybe even more yardage. So I'm out on Tyreek Hill this season, the new locale, uh, a big, big uh, reason for that. All right, A.J. Brown. I've always been out on A.J. Brown every year. Everybody always likes A.J. Brown more than I do. I, what I can't stand about A.J. Brown are two things. One, he runs extremely hot and cold. It's very volatile, his production from game to game. One week, he's going to go catch 10 passes for 150 yards and two scores, and you're going to go absolutely wild that week with him. And then the following week, he'll catch three passes for 15 yards and be totally irrelevant. And then there's a the fact that he always is dealing with an injury. Soft tissue injuries, in particular with Brown, are a problem. Um, and now, thirdly, you add on the fact that he goes to an Eagles offense that's extremely run-heavy. They had their most success a year ago when they turned to the running game. So while I think Brown is going to get his his numbers, uh, when I say numbers, 70 catches over 1,000 yards and, you know, uh, six to eight touchdowns, I think he's still being drafted too high. Um, and, you know, those three previous reasons I talked about has me avoiding him once again this year. All right, DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. I'm going to group them both together. Um, love both of these guys, but the name brand is going to outstrip what they, the, they will likely produce this year with uh, Geno Smith likely or Drew Locke under center. Um, it's a real shame because Metcalf is an unbelievable talent, but I just don't see him coming anywhere near the numbers he had with Russell Wilson. Tyler Lockett could be uh, a little closer to what we expect from him because of the short passing game with Geno Smith, but uh, I'm out on both of these guys. Now, a guy that I have on the borderline, I'm not going to say I'm out on him, but it's got to be the right price is Deontay Johnson. All right, we all know with Ben Roethlisberger and his noodle arm, he loved to check down to Johnson and uh, Najee Harris uh, all throughout last season. Mitchell Trubisky is going to throw it down the field. He's going to favor um, the vertical passing game as opposed to Roethlisberger. So I think we're going to see less targets and less raw receptions from Deontay Johnson. And then we have George Pickens, the rookie, who's earning all these rave reviews in camp. Uh, Chase Claypool is still there. Pat Fryermuth, the tight end, who was a revelation as a rookie a year ago. Um, and then Harris still out of the backfield. That's a lot of mouths to feed for a team that's going to run the ball a lot and that has quarterback question marks. All right, the next one is Amari Cooper. Uh, when Deshaun Watson wound up getting traded to the Browns, instantly I was in on Cooper because I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, he's going to be the DeAndre Hopkins in his offense. Watson loves to fixate on his number one receivers, but with the Watson legal situation, not knowing how many games he's going to be suspended, um, I just want no part of that. I think it's just going to be too much of a headache to have to deal with. How many games is Watson going to be out? Um, you know, are they going to be able to develop chemistry? So uh, I'm just not going to deal with any of those headaches because the receiver is so deep that there's no need to bother yourself with that kind of with that kind of situation. All right, uh, looking down my list here, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. I'm not waiting the six game suspension. I'm not just going to have a dead spot on my roster. There's no reason to carry him. He is a name brand guy, but he's also uh, 30 years old. Has started to develop the soft tissue injuries as he gets older and. Uh, saw his rate stats decline last year as well. All right, Devontae Smith, uh, even more extreme reason for A.J. Brown. The same uh, it applies to Devontae Smith. Uh, the Eagles have a lot of uh, guys that want the football, uh, with Dallas Goddard also into the mix. Uh, Kenneth Gainwell, I'm just not going to be involved with any of those guys. I'm, uh, you can fade all the Eagles receivers for all I care. I'm not going to do it. All right, um, Brandon Ayuk. 
The price is not as, as grotesque as it is on Debo Samuel, but I just don't like that passing offense. I do like Trey Lance as an athlete and as a fantasy quarterback because he's going to run a lot, but I'm not really going to seek out the players um, from that offense. Gabriel Davis, um, I think he, the, the price is getting a little bit out of hand. I do like the, uh, the upside on him, but um, again, it's got to be the right price for me to get in with Gabriel Davis, which I don't think I'm going to get. Uh, looking at the rest of the names here, I think that's pretty much it in terms of the um, the name brand guys. Um, Russell Gage, definitely out on because of uh, the arrival of Julio Jones. Uh, Corey Davis, I don't want any of the Jets other than Elijah Moore. Devontae Parker, I don't like the Patriot offense, so I'm out on Devontae Parker as well. So those are the guys. Those are the the guys that, that, that are significant fantasy football names that are going to be drafted higher than they probably should. And I gave you all the reasons why I'm going to avoid them. And um, they're not going to end up on hardly any of my teams this year for, for what I had stated before. All right. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button. Also, follow us on Twitter at Rotoboss. All right. It's very important to hit the subscribe and notification button because we're going to be doing live shows when the season kicks off. And also, videos are going to be uh, coming fast and furious. So until we speak again, guys, we'll talk soon. Have a good day.